Uh, uh, Mary, yes, you did win. Mary, you did win. <laughs> Congratulations. And go how do I go to a room? We will move you or go to the oh. bottom of your screen, hit the three dots and it says more and you can move yourself. We'll make sure that happens. Can do, I don't know, maybe it's my phone. Okay, we'll make sure we move you. Okay, welcome Bobby. Welcome Bobby to the stage. Let's bring Bobby to the stage, Vicki. How are you guys doing? Hold on one second. Let's bring Bobby to the stage. Vicki. Thank you. Great. Right. Okay, cool. Hey, Bobby, let me introduce you, okay? All right. All right. Let me, let me get to Bobby Finley. He, I just kind of made up a name um, for you. I don't know really exactly what your branding is, but I know you're an intuitive spiritual gemologist right now, and you're kind of incorporating your intuitiveness and your spirituality and working with crystals because you have taken your life, working with your hands for your whole life, building homes and houses, and now you're playing with crystals. And uh, he literally has like a little crystal farm in his in his backyard. And um, not only does he do that, but he's also a light language practitioner. He knows how to tra uh, translate it. He loves tumbling. He's re recently awakened himself. I don't know, in the past month, I don't know what happened, but something magical has happened. And like, it's it's beautiful to watch this and he's really in touch with his feminine side and he's really help, here to also help men connect to their feminine side to let go of their primitive energetic cycles so welcome bobby to the stage and i have no idea what you're going to do but have some fun all right um i guess uh the first thing that i'd like to do is just uh you know talk about how everything in this world has its own frequency you know from the smallest thing, you know, the, the microscopic, invisible, you know, quantum particles, all the way up to, you know, the the highest vibratory things uh, on the planet, like volcanoes, and uh, everything has its own frequency. Everything has its own purpose, um, and crystals fall into those same places. They can help us in many ways. You know, there's there's crystals that bring joy. There's crystals that bring inner peace. There's crystals that connect us to the higher realms of consciousness. Um, and, you know, I, for whatever reason, I guess because of being connected for most of my, not, my life, uh, not, you know, so much to my heart core and running from that, but being connected to the intellect, I've retained a lot of information that, you know, has, it's always stuck. I've always been connected uh, very deeply to uh, information center rather than heart center. And that's not, that's where I'm kind of getting away from. And I'm trying to stay in a place of feeling first. And so all of this, like she said, is, is very new to me. And it's been awakened through uh, ex you know, experiences when I was younger and stuff like that. Um, I was always very innately in tune to nature, to um, being outdoors, and um, like always had this innate knowing in me of these other things that can't be seen but are known deeper than anything that we can see, and the 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 crystals can be a major tool um, in ascension. You know, there's there's even crystals out there that, that aid in ascension symptoms that, that'll give us energy where we're lacking, um, grounding where we don't have it. Um, you know, like especially the one that I'm like really transfixed by right now is the emeralds. The emeralds, have massive amounts of properties. I mean, if you look them up, I could I could sit here and list them, but they're one of the they're one of the only ones that works off of the higher heart chakra, which is like our deepest seat of love. And um, they also have been used for thousands of years uh, as as Kundalini awakeners, as Shiva as Shiva lingams, and um, they also connect us uh, to 
opening other channels of psychic awareness and abilities uh, that honestly, as far as I've found right now, uh, it's, it's one of the ones that bridges over a lot of the different areas. Um, and I mean, if, if there's anybody that has any questions specifically about crystals, I'll open the floor up in a little bit to that. Um, but yeah, I'd like to give a little bit more backstory just uh, about me and uh, the, the things that, you know, have, have led me to this. Uh, I've, you know, I've had, I grew up in a Christian upbringing, uh, you know, not so religious, but definitely still indoctrinated. And like, it never resonated with me. I went to Bible college for almost two years. Uh, so I know the Bible well. I've delved into um, Hinduism, a little bit of Buddhism, Sikhism. I've, I've sought the world's religions for the right answers and could never find it in an indoctrinated form. Um, not to where it resonated completely. And I call it you can't put God in a box. He just doesn't fit. Um, so basically, you know, removing ourselves from any of the man-made traditions or rules or um, uh, things that are fixed, you know, absolute to this world. Uh, like, in my opinion, and, and, and this is only my opinion, I think there's only two things in this world that are fixed, and that's that the God spirit blankets all things and the rules of mathematics. Uh, those are the only two things that are not going to change uh, ever, in my opinion. And that being said, that leaves an opportunity for anything else to be possible. Uh, all things, you know, have there, there's no idea. It's new under the sun, you know, everything's already been thought of before, everything's already happened before, you know, maybe not in this exact paradigm of life, but previously or somewhere else in another parallel, you know, the, the more you deep, you, you dive deeper into this, it's like <laughs> the bigger the, the floor opens up to you every time, every time you see the full picture, one little thing changes. And the picture just grows and gets bigger and deeper and wider. And, and it's the same way with, with the love of God. The, the, you know, back, say, like December of last year, really, when this awakening really started, um, because of choosing to surrender to it and not run from it anymore, like I was in this picture that was drawn when I was like, 16 or 17 something like that uh so i've had i've had the call on my life pretty much all of my adult life and just wasn't in a place of readiness for it i guess um but the the whole thing about the uh, the awakening and how it is perceived at first um the crystals are a major tool with that you know um look up i mean if anybody has any questions when i get done talking like i said i'm going to open the floor up but i have i have a pretty extensive knowledge um definitely not a an authority yet but that's not far off because anytime i research something it's goes to an exhaustive level um but yeah, the, the light language translation that is new, that has just opened up recently. Um, and honestly, uh, being able to connect with someone's past loved one's energies has as well. Uh, the lady that uh, came into my room first today, her name was Deb. Uh, we went in there talking about crystals and, uh, you know, she, she started, uh, you know, talking about, you know, the, the, the ways of her past and stuff like that. And I felt innately, like, I'm like, hold on. I'm like, you just lost, you just experienced loss. Right. And then it went from that into, okay, it was, it was her husband. He showed me some, you know, some 
intimate memories of like you know where they used to live up in new york and the the beauty of the scenery in the adirondacks and uh, and it, it blew me away that all of this stuff you know it's real man it's real the the unseen controls everything that's seen and there's lies in the facets of everything we see with these eyes but when we see it and perceive it with the third eye it's divine truth and crystals can aid in that can aid in in all things in all walks of life you know even if you got some rowdy kids running around the house put put a bunch of uh, crystals that are calming like um uh uh like mexican crazy lace agate is uh is a stone that helps you find a, a center point and and a, a harmonious existence and that's really what we're being called back into is raising the vibrational frequency of humanity because right now humanity's song as a whole is not a harmonious song we are not in touch with this earth or each other or the creator the way it was intended to be. And that's what we're, we're being called back to our roots, back to a, a nomadic look at the world, a, a care, a deep love and care for our planet, for the creator and for each other. You know, that's, that's finding a happy medium in all things. And that's what is depicted as the counterclockwise spiral of life is is the harmony in all things at constant growth at, at an incremental rate, you know, steadily progressing forward. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's a high aspiration, but it's not unattainable. It's just that we all have to play our part. We all have to fit in where we fit in. And that's the beauty of the way that the creator designed things is that everyone has their part. And no one is above another. No man is above any animal. No, no being is above another. You know, if we all see each other first as another soul and come from that place of love and gratitude, not just for me being created, but for them too, because we're all, we're all one. At the, at the end of the day, we're all going to go back to source and we're all going to be one again. And the closest that we can get that to being that way here in this life is, I mean, that's, that's like the soul's biggest aspiration, right? Is to, at the end of this life, get a, a wink and a nod or something, you know, have some sort of, uh, I mean, I, I always, every day, have the sense that I'm loved innately, always have. Uh, and that, I think, is part of the connection to nature. Uh, because, like I said, there's, there's been plenty of things in this life that uh, I knew without ever learning them. Because as a kid, and still to this day, can't keep shoes on me, never could in the summertime, can't keep a shirt on me. I'm just outside, uh, you know, playing in the woods, running around, looking at rocks, playing in the stream, getting stuck at a tide pool at the beach for six hours, just mesmerized by all of the little facets of life, you know? And the, the gratitude is where the secret lies in my opinion because if you can find the ability within yourself to always just be grateful for being able to experience this life being grateful for the, the breath in your lungs and let the creator know that you appreciate it. That's the ultimate vibration of love, you know, compassion, empathy, love, gratitude. Gratitude is the most profound, in my opinion. And 
I am, I, I'm definitely in touch with my feminine side. I know why I picked my mom and I know why I picked my dad. My dad taught me everything I needed to know up here and with my hands. But my mom taught me everything I needed to know about my heart. And somehow with all the experiences I've had, with all of hardships and the, you know, the stumbling stones in life, I never walled it off because it always felt wrong if I tried. So, and I learned a major lesson in the beginning of me and Michelle's relationship um, through a buddy of mine, uh, a big guy, big uh, six foot five, 300 plus pound uh, buddy of mine from high school, black guy named Quentin. He, uh, he agreed with Michelle and I had been arguing her for, I don't know, three or four days at this time about coming from a place of love, no matter what, being a strength. And when it came from a buddy of mine from high school, that's rough and tough all the way around the board. He said, dude, you didn't know that that's a strength. And I went, Oh man, I guess it is. I would have never got it from her because I couldn't have related in the same way. But when it came from him, it was like, how did I miss it? You know, and, and that's the experiential thing. Like, um, I forget what her name was, the lady that was just on here. The experiential knowledge, learning through others' experiences, learning through other people's stories is worth by leaps and bounds much, much more than anything that you could learn from information or from, from you know, standardized, you know, schooling or something that someone tells you, you know, uh, when we hear someone's story and they paint the picture in our minds, we're living it with them, you know, and when it is, I'm being reminded of uh, a song lyrics. Uh, it's, a, it's an artist named Sat Singh. He says, um, he said, when you've held it in your heart, you held it in your hands. Because if you, if, if you envision something hypnotically or meditatively and, and walk it through the steps, of experiencing it as being yours. Once you have lived that in your heart, all you have to do is just accept it as truth and it is yours. And uh, I mean, I, I always, uh, as I'm speaking about these things because of my knowledge of the Bible, there's always scriptures that pop into my head and the majority of them, I don't even try to share be anymore because there's so much of the Bible that has been tainted by man's hand and lost in translation. And really, it's like back to God doesn't fit in a box, you know, and he's ever evolving. He's ever changing just like we are, you know, and the this is all about learning, right? It's all a big test. It's all a big. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a, like, a lesson on a grand scale for everyone to be able to look back at, you know, after we're gone from here and ascended to the next place and on to bigger and better things. I think that's why there's so many that come back to help is because they remember feeling the pain the love and the contrast between those two is what makes everything worth it because if it was just one-sided and not dualistic if you just had pain and that all that's all there was there'd be nothing to contrast it by but because we experience and everybody goes through it and some more than others because of choices, free will, but just, you know, 
everybody tries to avoid so many of these things and downfalls and and the easy the easy road is is the one that we always innately want to take and i feel like that a lot of people are missing something because i i mean i've experienced a lot in this life i'm 37 years old and i've experienced a lot of things a lot of different demographics a lot of different um uh personal uh paradigms of life and experience hardships and good in all of those areas and you you can't fully appreciate love unless you've experienced the opposite end and the farther that you've gone down that other road the more profound the love is and that's another reason why i get emotional the way i do because i am i am connected to the you know to the to the divine feminine and it's it's a strength to be vulnerable uh, vulnerability is power it's not a weakness and guys in this world have been they've been suppressed in that way just like women have uh, in 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 all the ways that they have is men have been told that it's not okay to show emotion certain things that aren't just meant to be talked about you know and what happened is everybody still there You can, you can. Sherry, what happened? Oh, I didn't understand what that was. No problem. You can start. Oh, okay. All right. I apologize. Um, I just seen that come up on my screen. I thought she was trying to tell me something. So, I mean, basically, um, that's a little about my story and a little about who I am. And uh, I'm just... You know, I, I, I had my own home restoration business. Well, I still have it, uh, all my tools and everything, employees minus one recently, but. Um, Why don't you share a little bit about that in a kind of a way, and don't give it away, but like, what are people, like people are really stealing crystals these days. I can't, I couldn't hear you very well. Um, I, I know if you want to share with the world of like somebody actually being a crystal thief, I think it's kind of almost amusing. <laughs> That someone's oh, going man. to be, go that low in order to survive. Yeah, it's uh, it, honestly, it's pretty sad. Uh, I'm not going to say any names, but a, an right. employee of mine who I honestly hired out of uh, sympathy for seeing some of my old walks in him, uh, you know, and he's been an employee of mine for on and off for two, almost three years now. And I mean, I've done a lot for this kid. I've been a true friend. I've always been a true friend to, to anybody that I considered a friend my whole life. Like I'm that guy that if I'm your friend, you can call me at 2.30 in the morning and, you know, say, hey, I'm stuck at such and such, you know, it's three hours away. And it's like they should innately know that when they ask, it's not, you know, if I'm going to be there it's, hey, I'm already putting my shoes on, you know? And like- What did I, you learn? What did you learn from this? I, I learned that really none of this stuff in the material world mattered. You know what I mean? He, he got $200 maybe worth of crystals, but he lost a friend that's worth a whole lot more than that. And oh if he comes back, if he were to come back into a good place and not be where he is now, I mean, forgiveness is profound, you know, for both really, but really, I mean, I had, I forgave him the moment that I saw him because if, if I wouldn't have, I'd have beat him up and I don't want to go back into those type of vibrations, you know? Mm -hmm. So I came from a place of disappointment and, and love and, 
you know, don't get me wrong, I was a little teed off too, because, you know, it was a violation of me and Michelle's house. I caught him in the garage like two nights ago and I, I held him accountable. I didn't send him to jail because it would have been, you know, burglary of an occupied dwelling, home invasion, grand theft. Hey, I'm not going to do that to somebody. I'm not going to, I definitely don't want to take nobody's freedom, but I held him accountable in the fact that he's not allowed back here on this property. And the, the officers that did show up here, I knew one of them um, and just said, listen, man, don't, don't let him know he's not going to jail. Go there, shake him up a little bit. Let him know, you know, that he's not allowed back over here, that he's trespassed. And uh, honestly, the, the officer got to talking with me a little bit more and started speaking on these spiritual things. And he asked me for my phone number and asked if there was a time when he could, you know, swing by here at night, he worked night shifts and flash his lights and come back and talk because he's of like mind. He's, he is, he's one of us and he started to perceive these things. And we had a great little talk for five minutes or so before he had to go because he was going over to Mickey's house to let him know he could, was not allowed over here again. I, I, um, I, think, I don't think we need to have all the details, honestly. Yeah. Um, well, okay. I just wanted you to just make a point. Okay. Um, did you show us your crystals yet? I don't know. Have you showed us your crystals? You said getting your oh, rocks off. You know, where's yeah, your crystals? Definitely. Um, Bobby, you know, this I'll is about showing you us your, your gems. You know, um, right. you know, okay, um, well. give us a little teaching opportunity and just know that people are going to violate us and how we're going to handle the violation and the boundary yeah. stuff. And, you know, this is someone you trusted and you supported. We didn't need all the details. It's just kind of a learning experience of of a little bit of violation. And like, yeah. I just wanted people to know that people are stealing crystals these days. OK, yeah. I'm like, who the hell would steal crystals and how do you sell crystals? I mean, like, do you go to, is there a pawn shop for crystals? Honestly, I, I think he was selling them on <laughs> Etsy or something. I don't know. You know, I'm like, this is new to me. So tell us about your crystals so we can learn from you, Bobby. OK, um, well, this is a this right here is a rare form of serpentine called lizardite. It's got atlantisite in it as well. Um, it's a uh, it's very high vibrational stone, uh, pretty rare from South Africa. Um, definitely a connection to opening psychic channels and abilities. Pull it back um, so we can see it better. OK. There. OK, turn it. That's it's, so, it's, is this it is a, this is a raw form. I can I can go get some stuff that's already been cut, but I, I buy it in the raw form and I cut it down into palm stones and is it pendants green? and what color quarry is it? stones. It's uh it's like lime green with little uh, white spe uh, like white quartzite running through it and mm -hmm. uh, it's got the, the purple atlantisite along with it mm. I also have uh, emeralds like I said the the raw emeralds in the matrix um, it's a uh, this is one of the ones that definitely opens your heart for sure and also connects you to uh, you know higher psychic channels and whatnot I, I really try to focus on the ascension stones, things that are going to open up uh, new possibilities out there, um, protective crystals. Um, I have a lot of these little spirit quartz points. These are great little pendants and stuff like that. Um, this is from uh, Namibia, South Africa. What are the difference? Um, Why would you choose them? Uh, well, this, the spirit quartz is connection to the angelic, um, and it's definitely uh it's like probably as as far as what i've felt probably the highest vibrational quartz that i have um and it's it's definitely one of those ones that you want to keep a grounding stone along with at least i do for sure because if i if i'm not grounded and and it's a connection to the higher realms i'm all over the place i'm like can't even maintain focus um there's a rubellite tourmaline. This is a, uh, a very protective crystal, um, removes EMF, um, electromagnetic frequency pollution, electromagnetic radiation. This is a connection to the higher realms as well. Uh, perperite 
it's similar to Labradorite in the tell way it, that. Tell, tell us the color a little bit because it's kind of hard to see, and some people might be no visually impaired. I'm, um, I'm, I'm I feel like I'm a little this. visually impaired right now. I'm kind of like squirming to see the color. I know this camera kind of uh, the lighting uh, in here. Um, sucks. the lighting needs to be in front of you, not on top. You know. Okay. I'm trying to figure it out, but just, just in front. Um, it's okay. Just just well, in front of you see. and hold it up to the camera a little bit, so it's dark. Is this black? No, it's 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 like purple. Purple. Okay. Yeah, you can't really. I it's, got I got a ton of it, but I got um. How come this you're is not in front of yourself? You should be in front of yourself. Yeah, well, Michelle, she didn't want to. She was channeling, and I I said, hey, I'm on in a couple minutes, and. <laughs> So she she held the floor and I'm okay with that. Uh, she can. Uh, I'm not seeking front stage in any okay. way. So why don't you but, imagine somebody who, who might be um, blind and just kind of a little explanation. This is a little brown and it has little nods. And okay. Yeah. This is this is called aragonite and it is. Uh, this is one of the stones that will actually. Um, uh, like bond with us meditatively its crystalline structure is the same as that of it's the same shape as that of our etheric body it's it's a tetrahedronal crystal and it's as far as i know it's the only tetrahedronal shape crystal that there is that i've found um it's uh and it's it's brown and clear so that's that's root and crown so it that it bridges all of them um it's uh it's grounding and higher angelic realms. Um, this is uh, a beautiful energy. It is called abalone shell. Um, they use it in smudging kits um, along with sage or Palo Santo, um, you know, maybe a little bit of selenite for absorbing the negative energies. Um, but this one right here, this one is probably the the highest vibrational connection to the other you know like higher entities higher beings that i've found it's called celestiite um and this one these are from madagascar right here and lime green color no no no, no bright it's like blue but it's okay. almost the same color as my shirt hmm the camera on this thing. I just got this computer yesterday, so. Um, you might want to get an, um, an external camera is what you're going to probably end up doing. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to have to because I can see how grainy it is. Yeah, it's a Logitech. Um, yeah. Um, but there's a, I mean, I have Mexican crazy lace agate. I have like a lot of it and it is a balancing stone. Like it's going to bring you into a place of like compromise or like a medium on, like, say you overly fixate upon something. It, I mean, it, it just brings balance into life. And uh, there's a lot of crystals that are like that, that are, that are the ones that, that, you know, help you find harmony. Um, there's, there's stuff like um, the opals and whatnot. All of the opals are like bringers of like either self-love love for the earth love for each other you know love of the creator um green opal this one here it's a uh, it's got beautiful inclusions in it and it it really kind of if once it's cut down and shaped That's it really kind of looks like a fairy landscape scene like what is that a called? lot of them what's that what is that i never saw that this one's called green opal I have green opal, pink opal, purple opal, uh, oh, blue dendritic it. opal. So is that hard? Well, they, they have a lot of opals in Australia, and um... yes, yes, they do. The opals in Australia, the Alexandria opals are yeah, in the they Boulder have black, opals. Black opals too, and they yeah, they're a lot of, a lot of they're gorgeous. Is that hard? They're chakra? expensive too. Is that hard chakra stuff? Um, this, I guess. I mean, if you go off of colors alone. Uh, I would say it's going to be root, heart, and crown, um, but uh, the color is predominantly green, so yeah, I'd say heart. Oh, oh you got some um, dark color in there that makes it the root. Okay, got it. Yeah, That's it's a got really some brown big in piece. It. Um, I'd like to have a piece of that. 
Okay. You know, no, yeah, guys, listen. You know, Bobby has a shop. If you want to put it in order, if you like like something, remember it, write it down. Bobby, yeah, exactly. might, you, I, I, I might even suggest like you know, say this is like uh, D D four, and you hold up D four, and like who wants D four? And I'm like me. It's like a right, little. If, I mean, somebody can connect with me. I got my phone number up there by yeah, my but name. Yeah, like we got to remember it. You know what we just what yeah. we looked at. You know, it's almost like hey. That's fine. You know, just a little suggestion so we can all write it down what we fell in love with. Okay. I was thinking about putting on my Instagram and doing exactly what you're saying, like A1 through yeah. A, you know, A9, B1 no. through B9. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. For you. Right. So, <laughs> but yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm just getting into this. I've, I've really only been focusing on, you know, it was, it started out as a hobby and <laughs> it was funny okay. the way it happened. Michelle, she bought me a few crystals for, uh, for Christmas. And as soon as I opened them up and, and held them and, you know, this was after the awakening happened. Uh, and I can tell that story another time, but it's a beautiful story too. But um, I told her, I looked, I took one look at her and first words out of my mouth is she knows not what she does because it, it became like this whole thing like, cause I was into crystals as a kid. I was into, you know, collecting rocks. I was transfixed by it. You know, the beauty of it, you know, so, sometimes it's the ugliest thing in the world on the outside, but as soon as you take off that outer layer and, and take a deeper look into it, it's just like we are, we can be ugly and, and grimy and dirty on the outside, but it's what's inside that matters. You know what I mean? And, and inside we're all perfect. You know, we, we're all divinely created. And the uh, it's kind of that same paradigm for almost anything in life. It's like, you know, turn it over, take a deeper look. And it's, you can find the answers to everything in nature. All you have to do is just sit there and ponder on it. Um, Robbie, uh, Robbie Kale made a, a distinction in one of the other rooms that, that I'm being drawn back to. And it was, you know, like the energy coming down is kind of like a funnel and the energy coming up is kind of like a funnel. So it's like kind of like an hourglass shape image, if you will. And I got the same exact thing, the same exact awareness from looking at uh, like a fossilized fish vertebrae that had a concave part on the top and a convex part on the bottom. And it met in the center, kind of like an hourglass. And it was just two nights ago that I showed Michelle this and told her everything that I got from it and explained it and how, and she saw it. Like, she's like, wow. She's like, you got all of that just from sitting here looking at this? I said, yeah. Uh, and that's bringing me back to the, you know, look to nature and find the answer to all things. Being connected with, with you know, the spirit of our earth and, and her heart. That was a lot earlier, man, when our heart's broken. We've, we've been here a cosmic five minutes, and it's a travesty what we've done to this planet, you know? And I just, you know, I just appreciate this experience. You know, every morning when I wake up, we do you know, the, the things that we're grateful for, for the day. And at first it was, it started out kind of like a chore, it felt like, but now it's like, I look forward to waking up just for that, you know, to be able to, to, to get imaginative with it. What am I grateful for today? I don't want to say the things I said yesterday, even though I'm still grateful for them. I want to look into deeper into the, the gratitude of just being here to experience this, just being alive, just being able to take a full breath and, and feel the, the breath of life inside of you, you know, because we're all going to have to give it back at some point, you know, and the time that we're here, the only thing that matters is the people that we touch, the people that we help, the, the love that we bring into the world. And, you know, I, I have no fear of showing emotion in, in front of anyone. And, uh, and I'd, I'd like to be able to help be a part of 
bringing that awareness back to men in this world, that it's not about how tough and, and, and you know, you can make yourself seem on the outside because we're all soft at heart on the inside. You know, love, it conquers all evil and it, it heals everything too. It's all in how you look at things, choices, you know, uh, the standpoint that you can step outside of and change your perspective on and look at it from a different way is a profound thing. You know, being able to see uh, all possibility of the way that people look at things in any given situation is like, it's like finding common ground with anyone, anywhere, anytime. And that's a major tool of life, you know? These things, um, they, they, I tell Michelle all the time, it's like, I remember bits and pieces, the majority of four or five of my past lives now. And in all of them, it has seemed like, it was a pretty cushy existence, a pretty, it was, it seemed fairly easy, but this life, it's like, I've kind of refer it to like a video game. Like I turned it on level hard this time for myself, you know? And I, I had a time when I had almost gotten bitter over these things because I didn't understand why these things kept happening, kept happening. I couldn't get anywhere. And as soon as I stopped trying out of my own strength and allowed things to happen naturally through his strength or her strength within me, uh, however you want to look at it, it's like everything just happens. You don't have to, you don't have to put effort into things. You just have to listen. You, you know, if you, if you have ears to hear, hear, you know, and and that's where I'm at now. I, I mean, if anybody has any questions uh, specifically about um, any other crystals, uh, I got dogs messing with me, sorry. But uh, I'd like to open the floor up for anybody that has any questions about anything, period. Oh, geez, I went a little bit over time, didn't I? <laughs> Sorry about that, Sherry. Good Lord, I did not know it was 50 minutes I was yapping. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Sherry is coming. He's in, she's in a different room. So, yeah, she's here. Right. Oh, I see her there, yeah. I'm here. Hey. Okay, cool. Okay, great. So are we complete? Are we doing? Your yeah, work? yeah. I just I mean, I didn't even look down at the time till now. I didn't know I was yapping 54 minutes. <laughs> no, it's okay. Because um, we had uh, another speaker who wasn't there, which was Roy, and we just allowed you to go over, which was perfect. Okay, oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's I definitely. I, uh, <laughs> I definitely so this, this is going to be fun good. for you. This will be fun for you to listen to your recording and uh, what, what, where you went with this and what you want to focus on, you know? Yeah. And, you know, to have your crystals ready and to explain it and have, you know, nice, good clarity so we can see the, the details. And we're like, I want that, I want that, you know, without yeah. having to comment on the color, you know? Yeah, it's, uh, the it's lighting nice. and the camera thing, that, that was hard, but, like... You can't yeah. really see, it doesn't do it any justice with this I camera. Know. Right. I, I really need to get one of those, the little, like the ones that stand up on the side that have good clarity and I'll, I'll be able to yeah. use that as a secondary view. Exactly. I have an yeah. external one. It's called Logitech and it's just an external camera you attach to your computer. No yeah. problem. We learn, right, let's cool. learn, we all learn that. You know, I pull out my camera and I, I go fuzzy too. So, yeah. so, um, so Bobby, thank you for being here for your, um, for your, first time and um 
being open with us and sharing everything as much as you possibly can as you're stepping up to the plate and one of your gifts, skills, and abilities. And your um, all the sides of you that you're willing to be vulnerable with. Yeah, I, I try to, I mean, transparency is is a big thing, man. And that's that's where I'm at. I just try to be, I don't, there's no reason to hide anything from anybody, you know? It's, Okay. The, the more we let it go, the more we can heal. You know, all yeah. that, we don't need all that poison in our body. So, um, coming up next in the playroom is his partner Michelle, who's going to be um, doing probably light language and channeling. I don't know if she, you know she, she's going to run on that on her own. You might end up popping in there with her, but people yeah, can follow you. They can follow you right now to your room, which is six six thirty nine and ask additional mm -hmm. questions or something that resonated with you and you didn't want to share it on stage and just have some time with him. Everybody has 30 minutes Q&A after their presentation where you can uh, book private sessions with them in their room. All right, cool. And the, then we also have the playroom, like I said, in room number one, which is Michelle. And then coming up next in this room is going to be uh, Robbie Kale. And he's going to be talking about how to gamify your day-to-day -day experience. Make sure you have your number down. Write your number down, Bobby. How okay. to gamify your day and proactively fulfill your daily needs. So, um, Robbie Kale is going to be up next on the main stage. He also has some documents that he is offering to everybody um, that we're going to put in the chat. And if you have a printer available, you might want to get your printer turned on. And that way, you might want to follow along. Whether he's going to use it for this part of his experience, um, this part of his lecture, or he's going to use it for his, le his experience later, which is at 7.30. He's literally gonna go from this room to the playroom. So um, whatever happens here in this main room, he's gonna piggyback into the playroom. So get some pieces of paper and pen ready, everybody, which is what he required. If you have a printer, turn on your printer because we're gonna share some stuff and you can print it off and follow. So Bobby, uh, let's go back to the chat and see who put a number in the chat. If anybody, oh, he already did it. Beautiful. All right. Anybody want to win a session with Bobby? I'm confusing Bobby. Let me grab my numbers Bobby. real fast. I have them. No, no, wrong person. No, no. I need oh. everybody to put in the chat his <clears throat> numbers. If anybody wants to win a session with him, we need to put in the chat right now. I'm mixing Bobby's and Robbie's. You come out, and when you're done with your, your session is when you offer your, your door prize. Okay, anybody who uh, listened right now, um, anybody want a session, put in the chat a number to win. And I'm going to, we have, we have, go ahead, everybody, we'll do a 54321. Give me a second, let me see how many people are here in this room right now. If anybody I think a lot of people stepped away. Because they're they're, all, well, why? not only stepped away, they're in different rooms, they're in the playroom, they're in the healer's room, uh, they do whatever they want to do. They're here all day. So right now, and anybody wants to win a session from Bobby, he's going to make an offer, and we're going to do a 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and what is your session going to be? Uh, it doesn't matter. Whatever, uh, if uh, somebody wants uh, intuitive uh, help and advice and let me know what they're experiencing and you know, I can give them advice on what crystals would aid that. Um, if they want to, if they want to connect with me intuitively, and they would like some sort of in, internal healing, uh, I'm definitely open to that. Uh, I connected with Deb earlier, and her healing from her ex-husband that just died. <laughs> so that was a new one for me. That was, uh, you know, like that's only happened one other time, and just the 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 profoundness of all this is humbling man and it's a beautiful thing to be a part of okay wherever the healing may occur so uh put in the chat a number from zero to 100 if you're just joining us right now to win a session with bobby our door prize i'll do a five four three two hold on the numbers are coming in now Two mm -hmm. one, because more people just joined the room. Okay, you ha oh, here comes more numbers. You have it written down, right? Mm hmm Okay. All right. What is your number? Thirty-three. 
Mm. Looks like we have the viola. Uh, mm. Mm, Steve, 11. Steve Miller. Steve Miller is closer. Congratulations, Steve. Thank you. Make sure you follow him to the room and um, and redeem your session. Doesn't have to be today. You can make an exchange with your information. Okay. okay. Um, if you want to do it today, Steve, uh, can we do? We'll do it at uh, seven thirty. I'd like, if I could, to take a break and get some get, get some food. I gotta go out and take care of the horses too. Yes, seven thirty is fine. I have to be somewhere else by nine, so I have to leave. All right. Right after. To, and you don't have to do it today. It's, it's not redeemable today. Okay. Today is about you doing sessions and being part of this aspect as well, Bobby. You don't have to redeem it today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then uh, it doesn't I, matter. I prefer it, you okay. don't. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's fine then. Well, uh, you can connect with me. You got my phone number on here. So, well, uh, no, no, guys, go to 639 and arrange this privately. Not in, okay. Okay. We're, we're live and uh, make your private arrangements. And we're going to take you off camera and we're going to bring in the next speaker. And 